Good morning. Uh, I have been given the pleasant job of uh, introducing our speaker. I'm Syed Hassan, as you know. I'm part of the program committee. And so uh, one of my charges was to line up the speakers. I'm very happy that we have been able to schedule Joy Miller, who comes from the K State office here in Johnson County. And uh, actually, I had a good fortune to listen to her presentation at uh, Johnson County Library uh, last year. And I thought it would be a very useful presentation for us also. So it worked out very well. She has been able to come here. And uh, as you can see, she's very well prepared with all the material that she has passed around. Uh, I think it will be very useful and uh, uh, instructive uh, presentation, and uh, I'll leave it to her, Joy. Thank you. Your... <coughs> Thank you for having me. Um, Syed had come to my presentation. We spent two hours, so I do not have two hours with you. So we're going <laughs> to um, kind of move quickly. I want to leave you plenty of time, but um, I don't know it all when it comes to valuable records and documents, so... Um, please do share experiences. This is probably where we learn the most is by sharing. Um, just what, real quick, in your folder, you do have a copy of my presentation. Not that it's okay. fabulous, but you do have it. Um, then you have um, my cheat sheet that I keep gleaning from resources. Um, of documents, information you might find valuable um, instead of trying to read my presentation. And then the last one is um, <coughs> just resources, internet resources that we put together with the Donson County Library if you need more information on certain sections um, with that. And we did uh, do this all in clickable links, so if you email me, I can send that to you in the PDF where you can click it instead of type in all those links. And then on the left-hand side, we wouldn't be extension if we didn't ask for uh, demographics and maybe something that you learned or intend to do. Again, that survey at the end is very optional, but um, if you are willing to provide any input, we would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. <coughs> so, we're kind of just going to go through the who, what, when, where, and why. Um, your valuable records. We now start receiving important documents. We get a birth certificate. Now we get our social security from the moment we're born. And we keep gaining information, let alone keep track of everything we got when we were young, as we uh, get older. So, as parents, you probably kept track of a lot of things for your children. Um, but when we reach 18, we are recognized as adults and we really need to be start becoming responsible for keeping track of our information where it's at. Because suddenly our parents can't make decisions or make that phone call and get things replaced for us. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> when we kind of come to retirement years is when most people think about getting all their documents ready, getting their wills together. Um, but really, again, that needs to start much younger um, in our time. But having our documents together, our information together, it really helps us in the everyday um, piece. So if you've ever filled out um, information for a trust, we're always having to report back to finding some piece of document, some account number, always having to try to look something up. So it can help you uh, manage your everyday financial affairs and things like that. In the case of an emergency, having your um, pieces documented or locatable, have you ever had your cell phone break or uh, suddenly die and all your contacts and passwords are in there? That's a little emergency, but it feels heart-wrenching. Um, but it can come down to a big emergency. If you have a house fire, if you, um, we don't think of natural disasters so much, but we know Nashville got hit with a tornado. We could definitely be hit by a tornado. Um, 
flooding. Uh, hopefully they have that a little more under control, but you never know, that day could come. Incapacity. Um, so that's when you cannot make decisions for yourself. Um, that could be a car accident. Um, that could be illness. Um, and we know more and more we're having dementia and Alzheimer's um, become a part. So, um, <clears throat> and then upon death. So <coughs> these are really where we're worried about mostly um, having our documents um, ready and available, locatable. We all wish, we all hope we're just going to pass away gracefully in our sleep and never be in the incapacity kinds of things. But getting them ready today or even earlier in life, there's really benefit to all sorts of areas. <coughs> so what? I divide sorting your documents into five sections. And, and there's a reason for that. Uh, files are five tabs. Okay, so um, we have our general and personal information, current money, maybe your future money is now your current money, but for me that would be future money, inventory and estate plans. And believe it or not, each section feeds into other sections of these five. Um, so we're going to go through this. The first section is personal documents, personal information, family. Um, I call it a personal directory or professional directory. You might call it an address book, those contacts. So this is things like your birth certificate, your social security cards, you have adoption papers, naturalization documents, green card, driver's license, passport. All these are very identifying papers um, that not only do you need to know where they're at, but somebody else may need to know where they're at, okay? so. Other things might be military and service records, marriage certificate, um, if you've gone through a divorce, an annulment, those things, or even a death certificate. So um, my stepfather just signed up for Social Security. I held his hand going through it. It wasn't a hard process. But he had to, his first um, wife passed away. He had to go find her social security number and the date she passed to put in that information. So even upon death, some of this information is important to know. Whether you have the original, having it documented in some way. Other things might be um, if you have a baptism or confirmation record, where are you holding those? Um, mine is probably in a box somewhere. Um, your voter registration card. Do you know where your certificates and degrees are at? On the wall, okay. Um, so it, where's your high school diploma? Not that you have to have it, but sometimes those are things we hang on to that just keep getting shuffled somewhere else. Um, my first profession is a registered dietitian, and so I have to do continuing education um, and so every five years I report, um, and then I could be subject to um, an audit. So if you have to do those continuing educations where it matters for certifications, where are you keeping those? Because it's no fun when I'm like, do I have my 75 hours um, if I don't stay organized? Um, some of you may not be going back. Um, I'm hoping this is my last change of um, positions, but I've kept my resumes and work history, so when I have to go back and redo a resume or, or do that presentation to the board, I can delve back into 10 years ago. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I did that. And then you might have special awards or recognition. So those, that kind of personal information and documents you might have hanging around your home. Some of it's very important. Some of it is just very meaningful to you. Um, we want to make sure we have things for our spouse or partner. So um, we help people with income taxes um, and people who still want to um, file married filing separately. We still need their spouse's birthday and social security number to, to move that forward your children, and anyone you're responsible for, or anyone who might be responsible for you. Um, those are things. <coughs> Pets are a big deal. We need to plan for them. 
<laughs> and really, um, when I talk about this in the general information, we're talking emergency scenarios, um, having you know your pet name, species, breed, coloring, I, if they have an identification chip or um, that rabies tag or immunization records. If you're displaced from your home suddenly with your pet, they may not let you into that temporary shelter um, if they don't know if your animal has had rabies. Okay. Um, one thing I've added in mine is a picture of um, us, my family, with the cat to help prove ownership of that animal. So if you, having a picture on your phone or something of you and your pet, it can be those funner ones. But again, that helps just identify, oh, yeah, this is your pet, not somebody who's like trying to go claim expensive animals to resell somewhere. I don't know if that's a story, but that's my, they want to make sure you are the owner. Um, under personal, uh, who to include, family, friends, if you're still employed or you still have benefits tied to an employer, you know, how... One, it's easy if you know the number and who to call, but if somebody else has to do that for you, they can go to your source and find that easily. Um, maybe you have business partners or customers. Maybe some of you are um, entrepreneurs. I put school in here, um, so you guys are involved in a school, but if you're going to school as an 18-year-old in college or you have um, grade school, high school, who's gonna make that, um, have that available? If you're a big volunteer, civic organizations, place of worship. Um, and here you can put professional services. Who mows your lawns? Do you have somebody who maintains your pool? Do you have a favorite plumber, electrician? Um, those kinds of things. Or, you know, we had a tree cut down in our yard or trimmed. We really liked his service. I want to make sure I keep his name and number for the next time we need that big oak tree trimmed up. So, and so instead of trying to find it through piles, we get that information organized. On the other side is just things you might include. Everybody has how far they want to go and how far they don't want to go. How you want to put it together, how you don't want it to put it together. So just know this is just <clears throat> to help you identify what you want to make sure of and, and what level of information you want with that. Um, and this is just questions. Do you have it ready? So you can go through your own little checklist. And what are your next steps? Maybe you need to create it. Maybe you need to review it. Maybe it just needs updated. But the big question is, who else needs to know this information? Communication, communication, communication. And it's not just a one time and done. It's <laughs> continual. Next is current money. Um, so this is anything to do with cash, um, income sources, expenses, or financial obligations. Um, and then kind of those odd things. Um, if you're really, um, I don't wanna say good, but if you run your annual credit report three times a year, you might choose to hang on to your credit report for a little while um, afterwards. So here, um, cash and the reason i just put cash is my mother um has cash in a box <laughs> up in the closet um that was left over from my grandmother passed part of her inheritance so she did not put it in the bank you have cash hang it out somebody needs to know where it's at <laughs> um but again the checking money market savings account um you know i had a classmate who she was the sole heir of her father's estate. It was a year or two <coughs> later when finally, I don't know how the bank tracked it down, that there was this account that was rightfully hers, but she didn't know it was there, okay? And they even have a website, you know, where you can go find lost accounts. <laughs> um, and I found my brother and sister-in-law's from when they lived in Iowa. I don't know, it was like $5 in it. But, you could have something that gets missed in the amount. Certificates, this just kind of runs through the thing. Cryptocurrency is a big one. <laughs> you lose that password, pretty much you've lost it. So, um, and on the other side is what you might include. That description of assets, 
who's the name of the business or organization. Um, I don't know, we're very much digital online, so having account numbers, pins, um, usernames, passwords, if it's a two, uh, two authentication, you know, is it going to email, the cell phone, how is that, um, is it going to duo? My husband would have no clue what duo is and never be able to figure it out through my phone, but. Um, you know, where is it? Ah, so we want an inventory of things. And so for those younger ones, scholarships and grants, um, government benefits. Um, and then this, I know it sounds funny, but does anybody have hotel rewards, airline rewards? Um, those kinds of things go under current money. So sometimes we just think, oh, the checking and the savings. And we forget about, um, these other reward pieces. And are those, do you know, are those usually transferable? I don't know. <laughs> Read the fine print. Yeah. <laughs> it depends, some of them do transfer, others don't transfer. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a very, there's just no 100% yes, 100% no. Um, so expenses, I know we think, oh, it's, it's the gas bill, it's the water bill. But again, knowing everything that you might have expenses, because if somebody has to step in for you, if you're the primary person who pays all the bills and your spouse has to suddenly step in and take that over, boy, it'd be nice if that was kind of at least a starting point to know what are we paying for, when's it due, how do I pay for it? Am I writing a check? Is it being charged to the credit card? Is it an automatic withdrawal from this mm -hmm. checking account? Because we don't want our checking account to suddenly have negative numbers or to close something and then they don't get paid and you know, we end up in this kind of crazy role. Um, so it's just keeping it. Some things are just once a year or twice a year, like property mm -hmm. taxes. Um, but in this one, I would include in February my state um, certification to be a registered dietitian, even though that's not what I do anymore. Um, that's due in February. So if I was in a car accident, I want my husband to be able to know to go pay that so I don't have um, issues later with that. Um, so other things, um, if you're if you write out a budget, um, if you do a bill calendar, if you do a net worth statement, you know, if you have financial goals or credit reports, this is the section you might put it under. <coughs> so, while nobody else needs to know, it's again there for your everyday um, pieces. Income taxes can go here too. Um, for emergency, they do recommend you have a copy of your last federal income tax so that you can prove um, what your income was. So again, you're in a, where you lost everything and you just need to present so you can get maybe some federal aid for the moment. Um, so you have it in place, where is it? How do you access it? Who has access? What are your next steps? Future money. Um, so again, for many of you, this might be your current money, but we're talking about retirement accounts, pensions, government benefits. Um, so again, in this one also, your life insurance policy. Um, with that, what account information do you want somebody to know or have access to? Um, here. Military veteran affairs. So this is where having all my father's military information is going to be crucial um, if I have to step in for him, um, even upon death, so that I can get him his headstone or buried into um, a military cemetery. Um, Social Security. So like right now, I just take my annual Social Security benefit that tells me my estimated do I qualify for Medicare? Yeah, I qualify for Medicare because I have enough work orders, but I'm not eligible for it yet. Um, so I put that in my um, future money because when I go to my financial planner, 
I have it ready. I can tell him accurate numbers when we're looking at the big picture. Um, and, and Medicare benefits, which is what most people have as part of their health insurance going on. So again, all of these might be in your current money, may not be here. But as you're guiding others, your, your children, people who are younger, um, I put this all in the future. Um, other things, I get a big old big financial analysis from my uh, financial planner. Kind of a pain to go back and find it so if i get it organized into a section i at least have narrowed that down um if you have a spouse and have ever done a widow's analysis again that's futuristic um again it's not this document you have to have to prove but it helps you think through your finances to do that inventory oh. <laughs> Um, in your inventory, you want your real and what we call personal property. That's anything with a title. So your home, your vehicles, um, maybe you have a second home, maybe you just own a piece of land. That would be your real and personal property. Physical property is anything without that you can't title. So everything we brought with us today is our physical property. Um, and so that is your bed, your sheets, your toothbrush, your, the average home has 300,000 items. So if you can imagine, we're probably all below or above that. And depending on the size of our house, we may have lots and lots of things. Electronic devices, your phone, your computer, your tablet, um, lots of things. Uh, digital accounts, so again, like, um, <coughs> I have um, Amazon photo storage. That's like a digital account. Um, your Facebook, social media um, are digital accounts. Maybe you have that password manager. That's a digital account. So um, lots of things. And then safekeeping and security access. This is your safety deposit box. Do you have a home safe? I joke and I pick on my husband a lot in this. We have more padlocks for trailers, sheds, um, than we will ever know. I will ever know what to do. But do we know where those keys are? <laughs> do we know if you have a security pad to get into your home or the garage? Do we know what those are? Does somebody who needs to know know what they are? And my husband, we have own a, a house um, at Lake Fort Scott, and he hands out sets of keys like no other, <laughs> and because every family member loses them. Who has keys to different things? Um, you know, if you have a riding lawnmower, where's that key? Where's your extra key to your vehicle? Um, so a little more detail, um, uh, include recreational vehicles, campers, um, things like that in there so that you know. VIN numbers can be very important uh, on our real property, sorry. <clears throat> One thing to know, and this will feed into the estate piece, is um, do you, did you assign a beneficiary? To that title property. Is it upon death, um, transfer upon death, or pay upon death, um, or does it go into your trust? Um, where is it feeding into it? Also knowing how is it owned. Or is it jointly owned between you and a spouse or you and somebody else? Um, those are things to review so you know what, how it will be um, transferred upon death. Um, warranties can be put under here too. Like my car is currently under warranty. So I don't want to lose my warranty because when I need it, I need it. Um, and also it's very important, purchase invoice or receipt. We may not always have that, but it proves uh, when we purchased it and what we paid for it. Home inventory, we want to make sure we get everything in the home and outside the home. 
So if you have a storage unit off-site, you want an inventory of it. Um, if you have things in sheds that sit around your home, you want an inventory of it. You want an inventory of the outdoor furniture, all of that. That's the stuff that'll probably blow away first is your outdoor furniture. <laughs> um, again, date purchase, cost, uh, any supporting documents that shows ownership, warranties, invoice, or receipt. This piece, this physical property, um, really comes down to insurance for a lot of us. If you have ever had a, a house fire, they're gonna ask you to list all 300,000 items to get your money back. <laughs> and they wanna know when you purchased it um, and how much did it cost. And so that's why I gave you that inventory book. Um, to just give you an idea of what to document. Let me go back here. If nothing else, because 300,000 items, I'm trialing you, it's tedious. And I'm trying to practice what I tell you, and I've been working on my darn clothes closet. It <laughs> takes time, it takes time. <laughs> so if you don't have any physical inventory, and this comes from a, an insurance adjuster, he says, stand in the corner of your room, and take a picture. So you kind of get wall to wall to a certain degree. Take a picture in each corner. So if you have nothing documented at this point, just take a corner from um, all four corners of each room to get yourself started. Then go to each closet, open it up, and take that picture. <laughs> okay? So it's kind of like working from big picture to getting to the details. So you know, it's kind of like, let's take it, get the big picture first, and then maybe the second pictures, because when you're under stress, no matter who you are, your thought process, your decision, your memory shoots downhill. Mm -hmm. And then three years after you've done the claim, you're gonna be like, man, I remember what we did claim or what we lost in that fire um, to do that. The other thing is, is if you can assign value to things, when you go to look at your home insurance or whatever, you're gonna know are you adequately insured or not. Um, going back to this one, um, so when I was at a church doing this, um, <coughs> somebody had a classic car. Mm. And so getting, having that written, what it's valued at, because if he made an insurance claim on this, I don't know, 1940 something, they're gonna give him the Blue Kelly book, not the super duper what it's really valued at. So if you have jewelry, um, fur coats, a gun collection, an art collection, things that exceed your insurance value for replaceable, you may want to have that appraised, documented, and then be adequately insured. If I read my insurance policy right on jewelry, I think mine says it'll cover $1,600 worth. That won't cover my wedding ring <laughs> if I lose it or it gets lost. So um, if you're inheriting things, like we just went through this with my mom. My mom doesn't know if this brooch is real pearls or not. So find out. You may have something very valuable that you want insured better. Um, but then you have the proof <coughs> that it was real pearls. Um, but pictures and receipts tell a lot. You can just email it and put it in an email file for yourself, um, you know, when you take those pictures, because usually we can access our email from different areas. Um, this is the electronics. So not only do we want to know what we paid and the cost, we want passwords um, and access um, if somebody else needs to utilize it. And uh, you know the like <coughs> fingerprint or face recognition? Somebody said, well, I'll just use my mom's fingerprint. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that might work <laughs> for some scenarios, but not all. Um, and knowing will they need any of this can help upon death or even in capacity to, you need to get this so you can handle finances for the time being or settle that estate. So before shutting that cell phone off too soon, you might need access to it. 
um, digital assets. Again, um, you might have a few, but it feels like everything wants to bank your financial um, brokerage. Um, I don't know, work. I have probably three different accounts for three, you know, things. Emails, um, your healthcare portal. Um, so we have lots of things we're needing passwords for. Um, in some social media, you can designate a beneficiary who can um, take that on afterwards. Um, but just, you have to just read the fine print on everything. Here's that inventory. Not enough time anymore. <laughs> Mine's a nightmare when it comes to this point because my husband likes things with keys. Uh, but, you know, even in this one, who services your vehicle? So you may have a, a small business mechanic or a friend who services. People need to know when they need to address things. Um, with inventory, um, you know, do you need a hard copy, digital, photo, video? Those are all things to consider when documenting things. Video, while it's great and easy, can be hard because it takes up so much <laughs> data. Like, it's not easy to email it, or it takes up a, you have to have a big storage space and then hope you get out with that storage space. Um, so while I like video, it's hard to transfer and it doesn't always open in everybody's application is what mm -hmm. um, I've learned. So have you created it? <laughs> That's a big one. Inventory is a huge, huge chunk of things. <clears throat> Estate planning just go into this. First one is, um, do you have your designations or paperwork in place that somebody could um, take care of your financial affairs and property if you cannot? And again, this is that big, in that incapacity state. Um, so, do you have a durable <coughs> power of attorney? And like I said, I learn. Every time I present this, I learn more and more. Even if you have assigned somebody a durable power of attorney to deal with your finances while you're in capacity, not everybody recognizes it. And so when you, if you have one drawn up, take it to your <coughs> bank and make sure they're gonna accept it. Take it to your financial brokerage and make sure they're gonna accept it because they don't always recognize it. I just learned that one. Um, Social Security, if you're drawing that, you have to go in and designate um, a representative payee. They're not going to accept your durable power of attorney. So if you have an SSA.gov account, you can go in and say, this is my primary representative payee, and then who's a secondary, okay? So if somebody's gotta go figure out where Social Security, where it's being deposited, or you need to change that because you're, you are not able to, um, they need that representative payee. If you don't assign it, they will assign one, and it may not be who you want. Same thing with veteran affairs, you have to assign a representative. Your power of attorney or durable power of attorney will not automatically be it. Okay? The other thing you might um, is HIPAA. So mm -hmm. even with my health insurance, my husband's on it, my child's on it, but he's over 18. I don't have access to even their bills. So if somebody needs to see bills or um, medical health information, you have to release, you have to sign a HIPAA form who can see that information. <clears throat> Can't do it if you're incapacitated. And this is, is that with every, like I was just at my doctor's office yesterday and despite the fact that I've been with the practice 30 years, I had to fill all this out again. Yeah, it's almost that. every year. And so like that I have, like many of us, many medical providers, do I need to fill out a form like that for every single one of I them? I would ask them okay. if you want, yeah. Okay. So it's your power of attorney so they can pay bills and things, <coughs> but also whoever's in charge of your power of attorney for health care, because it's hard to make decisions 
they can't have certain access. You can so, limit what they can see. Sure. So the power of attorney for health care, is that the same as the HIPAA? Um, well, HIPAA is not, no. HIPAA is, so HIPAA is, like if my husband signs off on HIPAA, now I can, for our insurance, our health care insurance, mm -hmm. now I can go into his account and see the claims that were made. Power of attorney for health care is somebody who's going to make your health care decisions. Okay. Right. Okay? So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so again, if you do not do a power of attorney, um, durable power of attorney for finances, the state will give you one. Yeah, what is HIPAA? HIPAA, oh, <laughs> health information protection, Privacy. Privacy Act. Yeah. So this started a long time ago. So um, that your personal information and your medical health history remained private. So um, I can't just call my dad's doctor and find out what's going on. He has to provide the authorization that they can give me that information. Okay. Okay. Now, what I learned with HIPAA. Uh, other than going through online and trying to get my husband's, uh, you know, bills. Um, when you go into a facility, um, sometimes they're loose, sometimes they're really tight. So just know uh, not everybody's 100% by the rules, okay? So, um, again, if you don't appoint, state courts are going to appoint. Social Security will appoint, and if you have um, Veteran Affairs benefits, they will appoint. So, and they may not appoint who you want. Um, so in this, also, um, you wanna check your beneficiary designations. When I started in extension, so I was in my 30s, Orientation, Human Resources, said double check your um, retirement and your life insurance contact or beneficiaries. Because too many times, they've had somebody who's made a career out of working at K-State, divorced, remarried, never changed the beneficiaries, first spouse got it, second spouse was left without. And there's no changing it because mm -hmm that person um, with those benefits did not go back and revisit and make any changes. So you may, um, you may have your spouse now, but if they happen to pass away and you don't update it to if you want it to go to your children or you want it to go partly to your grandchildren, however, life changes. We have many life events that can change some things. So we wanna make sure beneficiary designations are correct. Um, because the other thing is, is if you have a trust, things don't go into the trust unless you put the trust as the beneficiary of your accounts. So if you build a trust um, as your official financial document, it's not funded until you've titled everything to go into it. So um, that's one thing to think about. Can you, can you elaborate on that point? Suppose, suppose I have a trust. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that uh, <coughs> unless I specifically designate in my will maybe that all my asset in the trust should be distributed like this, this, this. Is that what you're saying? Um, kind of. So you have a trust. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let's just say it's your bank account, your checking account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you're the sole owner of that checking account, nobody else is on it with you. If you do not say pay upon debt to the trust of Syed, it's not in the trust. Okay? If you have a vehicle that you want to go in the trust, if, um, if you do not sign the transfer on debt to the trust of Syed, it's not going into the trust. One specific <coughs> situation with designating your, uh, uh, the recipient, the American rule is 
not prosterpes, but for the surviving people. So if you have uh, three children and one of your children dies, but they are grandchildren, if you have a designated to your children prosterpes, one third goes to each, meaning the grandchildren of that uh, non-surviving uh, child won't get to share that part. The default in Europe is that that happens. The default in America is if you have a child that died, you lose out and only the two surviving children yeah. get the mm. estate, so the, the, the inheritance. State of Kansas, if you don't have anything and there's if you have a spouse and you have your children, the spouse gets half and the children get half. That's the general rule. Yeah. You so can also, Pusterpes allows you to exclude uh, par marriage partners who, who are not your children. If you specify your children, yeah. it doesn't go to the spouse, surviving spouse, it goes to the children of that couple. So it gets complicated mm -hmm. quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so and it's unless really unless that's true, unless you have a designated <laughs> otherwise you're will. Oh right? yes, yeah. But in the will, you often have specified prosterpes as well. Right. If you don't specify it in your will, you get the same problems. So okay, let's go back up here. And I'm not an estate planning expert, so. Um, take this as general and then go deep dig for your situation. Okay, so the first way to transfer property is a beneficiary designation. So, um, like right now, my husband and I, we are joint owners on a bank account. If I pass, he rightfully owns the checking account afterwards. No, no problem. But if both of us pass, now we have designated two of the children to be paid upon death of that account. So that's pretty clear cut if you have that paid on death mm -hmm. or transfer on death piece. Um, so I got married in 2016. Um, and so instead of retitling the whole vehicle, I just put <laughs> transfer on death because that was cheaper to do to my husband on my vehicle um, that I brought into the marriage. So. I know he'll have ownership of it if something happens to me while we still have this vehicle that I purchased <coughs> prior to marriage instead of going through the whole title piece of it. Um, a will is another document um, to transfer your items. You do not have to what we call fund it. You don't have to say, you know, put your check in the will of, but if there isn't a designation then it'll go into the will the will typically goes through probate in the court and everything you have has to be published so in my little hometown of 2,500 people <laughs> we're nosy little people um, <laughs> it's gonna get put in the Holyoke Enterprise if I do not know what want people to know what I have financially I don't want to do a will, okay? Not everything ends up going through court and probate, but that's technically what it's there for. Your, 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 your life's gonna be advertised. This is also, um, no matter if you do a will or a trust, they have to put a notice out to creditors. This is their opportunity. They have like three to four months to make any claims on your, like, oh, they owe us a bill, they owe us, to try and settle your estate. Next is a, you can have a pour over will. Um, and a pour over will is to catch anything you didn't fund into your trust. So often now when you do a trust, you're gonna have this pour over will just to catch any incidentals that you did not exactly name a beneficiary and did not get funded into the trust. So it's kind of like the safety catch. The will is important though if you have any children under the age of 18, because that is the legal document where you get to state who's the guardian of your children if something were to happen to you 
um, and that, that other parent. So anybody with children under the 18 definitely needs a will just so they can um, have guidance in who will take care of their children afterwards. <coughs> the whole idea of having a will was to avoid probate. Yeah, that's the trust. So I just that's the trust. The trust if you is put the avoid probate. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Didn't ask the right questions of the yeah. lawyer. Okay. So <laughs> the trust is where it's a more private scenario. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to go through court and go through probate. Okay. okay? But you have to have a will for the 18 and under. <coughs> and like I said, um, <coughs> My will done in 04, 06 was a trust and it had the pour over will. Um, then there's an irrevocable trust. Uh, so a trust is something you can still manage. You can still change it. Um, irrevocable is where you put things in there and then you have no control afterwards. So this is how you avoid um, showing you have assets in a way. But if I do irrevocable and I name you as the beneficiary, or I have no more control. I can't even change the beneficiary. You have all control. <laughs> so, so what did Trump do? They all have irrevocable trust so they can tax you know, tax shelter their money in different ways. I don't know if he did that, but that's very common that um, some wealthy families know how to really use this irrevocable trust. So on the irrevocable, I mean, is there at some point where you can change it? Or um, The one story I've heard is, okay, and I don't even know who the people are, so that's pretty safe. Um, they did an irrevocable trust. They named their daughter as the mm -hmm. beneficiary. She went through a lot of mental um, kind of scenarios, and they felt this was not this was not good that, mm -hmm. um, if she inherited this or it was not going to be, it took them, I don't know how many thousands of dollars to get it undone. Uh -huh. So not that it can't be undone, but you're in for a fight and a lot of financial costs to, to get it changed. Upon your death, your trust now becomes an irrevocable trust. And all that really means is um, your power of attorney for finance or somebody else cannot make changes to your trust. So upon death, it technically becomes irrevocable. So you don't have people changing beneficiary names or percentages or adding themselves back in um, with that. Again, if you do not appoint somebody, the court systems will. Um, and in this, that personal property that has no title becomes whoever's the executor of your trust. Um, so if you want, um, I want you to have my grandma's pearl brooch. I need a list and I need to say who it goes to, sign it and date it. Otherwise, whoever's the executor technically should sell everything in your house because it belongs to the state. It's not that there's this exact legal right that everybody gets a chance to pick what they want. In this, I don't know if I'm there yet, I'm getting close to the end of time. Planning for your pets is also important. Digital assets. Can I say just one thing about the insert you had over there? Over here? Uh, the, I don't know what it is in Kansas, but over here I have a beneficiary deed on my house to my sons so that it doesn't have to go through probate. Yeah, that's a transfer on debt. Yep. Um, so sometimes in this, especially if you have somebody who's helping you, like a child, um, instead of making them um, what we would call Tennessee in common, meaning they have joint ownership, you can ask somebody to just be a signature on your account so they can help write checks, but upon your death, they do not own the account then. So if your intention is that you have three kids, you want all of them to split that, um, 
just have have the child who's helping you write checks or pay bills just be a signature on your account, not a joint owner. Because death does funny things, no matter how, oh, suddenly it's like, no, I think mom intended me to have all that account. People get funky. All right, make sure you have a digital estate list um, in your estate plans. Healthcare, um, again, when you're turn 18 as a parent, you do not necessarily have the automatic right to make their healthcare decisions. Um, the Terry, Sh Sh I never say her last name right, Shivo, Shivro, case in Florida, that's what that was all about. Um, she did not have a healthcare power of attorney, so her husband and her parents were, had difference of opinions, and that was, went to court for years. You may get to make the decision about a child, but you may not be able to pick up their personal belongings like that cell phone and their clothes. Um, so while you get to say, yes, take them to surgery, you may not get the other personal belongings unless you're that health care power of attorney. Not saying it happens that way 100%, but boy, we know <laughs> an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of problems. <laughs> Um, other designations or documents, living will, do not resuscitate, again, that HIPAA, um, and then organ and body donation designation, if that's of importance, okay? If you do not designate it, at least in Kansas, they'll assign you one, and that may be too late. Um, other wishes, do you have a particular funeral home? Do you have policies or prepaid burial plans? Do you want to be, you know, buried or cremation? Um, and now there's an option to be like naturally decomposed. There's a mm -hmm. site in Wichita for that. Um, <laughs> what's your celebration of life? Do you have particular songs, hymnals? Is there a particular religious leader you want to lead your your service? Um, <coughs> memorials, obituary. My grandmother's. One of her few wishes was, is that we posted or published her obituary in the Denver Post. Um, so, you know, if you wanna leave letters to loved ones. Pets are the other thing to plan for. Is there somebody who's willing to take your pet? Or if nobody's willing to take your pet, is there a place you would, you know, is there a particular shelter of your first choice where you would want them to go on to? Um, not to be morbid, but my parents have will have three dogs cremated by the time we think of their death. They said, just put the dog's ashes in with ours when you bury us in the ground. So again, that's a wish, like, just put them in with us. We don't care who goes with who, but that's what we want done. So letting your plans be known, what your wishes are. Because um, again, there's lots of discussion on those things. Um, and there could be odds of, do we have a big one? Do we have a little one? Is it here? Is it there? Um, so at least knowing your wishes is important. All right. What? <laughs> <laughs> but the how. Um, one is the declutter phase. We want to, we have to, we, <laughs> Extension's horrible about this. We have paperwork everywhere. And we tend to pile, but we need to get through our papers. We need to get rid of what doesn't matter. Um, and trust me, decluttering can take two to three times. It's a constant thing, okay? And then we want to shred anything with personal information that we do not need. So, like I just went through my husband's financial. We just keep the last year because it's the accumulative we shred the rest for that year, and then I archive it. Two, it's figuring out your organizational okay. system. Yeah. What about keeping records for seven years? That's the typical. For tax purposes. Yeah, yeah. tax purposes. She no. said she don't know taxes, she throws the... No, 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 financial, um, like our, our investment statement. statement, sorry. Oh, I didn't say okay. that clearly. I always keep my last pay stub too. Um, because that I use to compare to make sure Social Security got the right number in there. <laughs> um, yes. 
Um, kind of along those lines. My brother passed away in 17, so that's what, nine years now? Is there some place I can look to see what, if anything, I should say of his, the death certificate, I would think, but is there? You know, I don't know a great source or resource that says keep these five things, um, no matter what. Um, I, I would probably find a, a special nook for them or a place where all his things are. Um, and then the, I take it he doesn't have any children or he was single and yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's kind of like upon your death <coughs> that might be the time those records can be destroyed I just can't say what will ever come up where you might need them mm -hmm. I mean it's probably pretty clear it's all been settled nobody's going to gain benefits from knowing you know receive benefits or things because of a relationship but that's the hard part is do I save it it's just in case I might need it later and then having it overwhelm your household mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and that's why I don't say 100% this or that because there's always this one exception for somebody two you need some sort of functional system I'll tell you Files upright are better than piles. Yeah. Okay? When things are upright, um, you can see them better, you can file them better. So um, I am a notebook user for my everyday reference emergency kinds of things. So I have a copy of my social security, my passport. So it's in my, I call it my financial binder, and it does have tabs with files but that's my reference so I don't have to go down to the safe deposit box or the one at um, the home safe or in my archives to find that information. So I, I use mine for multiple reasons. I can grab that notebook and go if I have a fire and I'm gonna have pretty much all my documents and access to it immediately. But everybody's purpose and reason is different. I try to use my multifunctional so I keep it up. So a lot of times people will create a, here's my estate planning, and then they stick it away and never look at it again to put those updates in it. And it's hard to be motivated to update that when that's, somebody else is gonna use that. I don't need that piece. But create some designated spots. Your power of attorney for healthcare should not be in your home safe or your um, safe deposit box at the bank. Or a desk drawer with uh, rolled coins, like we found my dad's oh, two yeah. weeks after he died. Yeah, <laughs> that one, um, whoever is your health care power of attorney should have in hand, um, and you should have one too. So you can make multiple originals of that one, and that one's easy to change um, if you <clears throat> suddenly need to change that. But they need to be accessible. And usually when an accident happens or it's needed, um, it's not between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. And somebody has to have access to those things immediately um, to help service. So there's lots of companies out there. There's lots of systems and ways. Um, you have to figure it out. So it's got to be just right for you. So you'll see like, I don't know, it's not on Facebook, it's like a, your life in a box and it's all these files. And I'm like, okay, that might work for somebody. But you don't want it so cumbersome, so detailed it's cumbersome, but you don't want it too vague or disorganized where it's not working for you. So I did give you, oh, I'm two minutes over. Um, this All About Me book, this is from mm. our, our AAA here in Johnson County. I can tell it, when I've looked at different books and systems, not everything is just right for me. So I'm a combination of hard copy and digital. Mm. But the one thing I really like in this book is the, the military page. To me, that's, I would just rip it out, put it in a page protector, put it in my notebook for my dad. Um, so take the pieces that work for you. Um, 
one system or one person's ideas are not going to be perfect for you. So, last one is just update and review. Update and review. Mm -hmm. So, tax time, I go downstairs and I make sure all the taxes are still in the right place. I keep the last year's right where it needs to be. Um, and so tax time is just the cue to maintain that piece. When we see the financial planner twice a year, that's when I go through all those papers, discard what we don't need, and make sure I have in the place, um, in my location, what I need. So, it's a lot. The benefits, you will be more productive. You'll do less procrastination. Um, it will save time. It may take a lot of time in the beginning, but it'll save a lot of time and reduce a lot of stress. Peace of mind and a gift to yourself and others. And then in the end, it can save money, whether that's for you or your loved ones. And that is it. Sorry, I'm five minutes over. No. <laughs> On the invitation, it said 10.15. Oh. Yeah. So? So okay. we have time for questions. Yeah. Um, so just a couple things. Those so aging and human service, the All About Me book. If you don't want to use it, and you know somebody, you can pass it on to. If you do not want it at all, you're welcome to leave it. I don't want any more clutter you have to deal with. <laughs> the um, inventory book is from the Kansas um, Insurance Department. Again, it can be a good cue. In that aspect, I'm digital, because I want to just go make one change to be able to print it off. Yep. They may have a digital form, but it tells you what you might need. Um, again, those are free off of the website. You can order it, and they will mail you one. I don't know what Missouri has. But again, if you don't want it, you are welcome to leave it, because I don't want you to have to have a pile of something else. But, all right. Any, any thoughts you want to share for the benefit of the group? Yes. One thought has to do with the durable power of attorney and your um, living will. I think most um, hospitals now that you work with want those on file with them mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Because we got asked the last time <coughs> to upload ours so they could have that right if we ended up in the hospital. Yeah, but if I'm going through emergency services and I have to make decisions, I want to just be able to hand that off to the nurse and doctor. I, I want, I don't, because they're dealing with the emergency, I don't want them to have to go figure it out, where is it in the file system. And I also heard from talking to our uh, gerontologist that we should have a form that's like really bright colored that gives our wishes stuck to our refrigerator. <laughs> so we have these bright pink things yeah. because the EMTs know to look. Uh, yeah, they'll look places. in your glove compartment of your car, and yeah, they're kind of being trained to look at your refrigerator. Um, any information you put on there, put a picture of yourself with that information if there's two of you. Okay. Because, well, even if it's just one of you, I don't know if you're Sally and you're Joe, and you could have been a guest, and I, I don't know who you are, and I'm thinking, you have heart failure or something, you know. So having a picture of yourself, just that mugshot, <coughs> can really help them make sure you are you. And and then following information. I can tell you put, putting do not resuscitate all over written, handwritten, will not work. <laughs> That's what my grandmother did. <laughs> she had a post it all over her apartment, do not resuscitate. <coughs> she needed the official forms <coughs> completed. Those official forms completed. Yes. How do you make sure that your lawyer that has your will, power of attorney, and all the other paperwork uh, is stays alive by the time you ne you or your children need it? <laughs> um, it should be filed with the courts, and then you have a copy. Yeah. So. Um, but um, in my last session I did this, um, one gal lady just has one daughter. She said, I took my daughter to meet 
my financial person and my lawyer so that they had this introduction and familiarity of faces before anything serious happened. And I thought that's a nice idea to help that bridge that unknown. Um, so the daughter has at least been to the office once, has seen that professional once, um, and they've met. So I, I just thought that was a nice idea. On, on government papers, they typically say, it will take you 15 minutes to do this for do you have an estimate to do this at least to start with it uh, how many hours how many years do you need um, <laughs> it is continuous yeah but some things i sometimes um, when we talk about like decluttering your house and getting it organized start with the things that aren't going to change social security birth certificate you know you only get one of those and, and designate where you're going to put that, create that document for communication, boom. I mean, you might change the location or something, but that information doesn't change much. Um, I would say, you know, whatever you're actively coming in, so if you're going to the bank, I kind of time things. Um, when I'm going to the bank is when I'm going to make sure I know who's the beneficiary of my accounts, I get a copy, I just say, can you print that off for me? I stick it in my financial notebook. You can stick it in a file if you wanna archive it. But when I wanna go back and go and do that review, it's there. When I renew my tags, again, that's that time I can review. So look for the cues too. Time, I don't know, I'm still trying to get my closet inventory. That's been happening since January. Um, so, you just have to keep packing away at it. Um, it'll take twice as long as you think. <laughs> yeah, I think one, one good way I like try to do it, uh, just my, my personal view, uh, you have to do it uh, bit by bit, you know, don't try to do everything at one time, you will get overwhelmed. Uh, what I did is that I first tried to put all my digital data in place, like uh, bank account, a password, and all user ID and so on. That itself take time, takes time, really. Although it seems simple, but depending upon how many banks, how many investment companies you have account with, that will take time. It took me about three, four days, and I would say in terms of hours, about six to eight hours. So it is time taking, but it's worth it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> what a job. Your presentation today created in me some kind of existential anguish. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you now, now you know, you, 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 you say something, now you need to explain why. Uh, I, was, I was not aware that I was some kind of uh, equation of blood, flesh, and mathematics. <laughs> so the point is, wow, so many numbers, so many digits, so many responsibilities. Uh, uh, am I big enough for all that? Uh, uh, I have some numbers and uh, I don't know where are they are. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to know. But the, the point is, yes, you're, you're absolutely right that uh, we are just numbers. We are just a succession of numbers. <laughs> you know, we begin the, with social security. Okay, and, and we, we don't know where, you know, you know where you were born, but you don't know where you are going to die. It's the same thing. You know? And uh, really, it is very, to me, it's, it's amazing to see what, what kind of we are at the, the, the edge of the, the, the abyss. Uh, you say, well, so many numbers. This is an ocean of numbers. Ocean of numbers, I like that. Uh, numbers <laughs> of everything. We, we did 1984. Uh, remember the novel, 1984? Uh, we, 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 this is that, and uh, it's, it's incredible how we became, not, not because of you, but <laughs> we became some kind of dehumanized people. We lost flesh, blood, uh, blood pressure, and we became just figures. Numbers, numbers, and numbers. Uh, I'm a humanist. I was always dealing with uh, languages, uh, humanities, uh, and Renaissance uh, art. 
So this is very important because all of a sudden, here, I, you know what? I was aware about some figures, yeah. but, but not so many. This is a labyrinth. This is a labyrinth. You know, you can get lost. In that. <laughs> okay. So that that's yeah. what. And this is very good. And yes. the, yes. that is, are you able to hold that? Oh, I've already got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good um, I, always, <laughs> science, yes, yeah. I always think, um, for the human piece of it, our mental wellness, I know, it's a lot of numbers and data and documents, um, the stress, but this peace of mind for ourselves and others, and honestly, it can bring peace and lasting relationships within the family because they're not, it's all laid out, it's all done. If you want to explain to them why before your time comes, you can. For others, they're like, mm, that'll just create World War III and, and, and that'll, but it creates the, the broken relationships later between siblings or um, extended family. Um, I don't know. I've heard where certain family members didn't go to the funeral so they could go loot the house. Um, you know, people get funny. And my husband's that good old boy system. Because we went through this. His ex-wife was the beneficiary on a life insurance policy. And I said, that's okay. I just want to know. I'm not worried about who gets the money. I just want to know. And he goes, she'll do the right. And I'm like, she shouldn't have to. <laughs> like, your procrastination and your lackness doesn't mean she should have to make the right decision. So, um, if I had, if I'm of a different attitude and thought process, I could be very angry and create issues. Um, not only for that ex-wife, but I'm going to strain my relationship with his three children over that that oversight or lack of willing to change it. So there's, a, there's very much um, that personal relationship um, and the added stress of family members that this can be a big gift of having it organized and, and moving on. It is about 10 15 now, so you can st stay. I hope Joy will stay longer. But I want to make sure that all of you have filled out the evaluation form no. that is in the green folder. Please do that. Uh, make sure you collect it and take it to her. Yeah. Thank you. I do have a few extra books, so if you know anybody you would like to pass it on to. I don't know. We just you can pass them down to the end, yes? Thank you. Sorry, I didn't know that. Okay.